head now to Moscow. Moscow City. Russian is a very difficult language, and what I'm going to do is give you a few quick translations of the internet culture in Moscow. Here's, here's what you need to know. Firstly, the word search in Russian isn't Google, it's Yandex. They've got 64% of the market. Number two, Facebook is two words I can't pronounce. It's even harder than Norwegian words. Point number three, email is not hotmail, but mail.ru. Fourthly, live journal used to be American for blogging, but now it's Russian for blogging, since they took over the site. And fifthly, the internet means Moscow, because 70% of the internet population in Russia is concentrated in that city. One of the biggest challenges about the internet in Moscow is the language. It's all in Cyrillic. The other thing that's interesting about Moscow is that one of the easiest degrees to get if you're graduating from school is a programming degree. So there's a vast, uh, there's a vast force of IT and technical talent. And unfortunately, they're up to all kinds of mischief. One of the things that happened last year that was in, uh, very interesting was the Moldova riots. And it was interesting because it was one of the first times the Russians took a hold of a US platform, Twitter, and started using it to organize protests. Now, the world's media took a hold of this and went, wonderful, they see Twitter, they must be freedom fighters. Well, unfortunately, they happened to be thugs who were, who were also just using Twitter. It was just interesting to see that how sympathetic the Western media were interpreting the story. This is quite an amusing video the, oh, of a young Russian child being interviewed during the riots. And you can see here the translation. The, the camera was going, look, it's the great seal of Moldova. Uh, not an effing thing left of it. He turns to a kid and says, can you say a few words? Why did you come here? The kid goes, to defend Moldova. Off camera, someone says, so why don't you like communists? And the kid goes, I don't know. I just don't like them. And then the cameraman says, how old are you anyway? And the kid goes, I'm turning 16. So it, Twitter in Moscow has become almost a form of entertainment. And for a lot of kids, to be a hacker is to be a hero. One of the top selling magazines for teenagers in Russia is this magazine about hacking. And one of my favorite covers is this one here on the, on the top corner. The, the headline translates, we have conquered the world. Are you with us? To be a hacker in Russia is a bit like being a hip hop star in the United States. It doesn't help that even the Russian government calls hackers national heroes. And when, during the recent clash in 2008 between the, the Georgians and the Russians, in July and August of that year, there were two massive denial of service attacks launched by Russian hackers against Georgia, which managed to bring the internet down to that country. In fact, Georgia had to move its service to the United States during the conflict. The Russian government came out and praised the hackers as national heroes. And in fact, this rather charming gentleman, I can see behind me, who was uh, the, the deputy chair of the, the Duma, actually said that in the future, we may see conflicts that take place not only on the open field of battle, but rather in spaces on the internet. A small force of hackers, he said, could be stronger than a multi-thousand force of armed troops. I saw this gentleman and thought, is it possible that I've seen him before? But then again, I thought, no, that's crazy. I don't know what I was thinking. So that's Russia. 